Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine is having devastating consequences for the people on the ground. Although the terrestrial implications of this war are far greater than those for space flight, there will nonetheless be ripple effects felt by space programs worldwide. For more than two decades, the space agencies of the United States and Russia have been partners, but the recent invasion of Ukraine threatens to end that long-standing cooperation. New U.S. sanctions on Russia will encompass Russia's space agency, Roscosmos, according to a speech U.S. President Joe Biden gave on February 24. Dmitry Rogozin, director of Roscosmos, went so far as to suggest that the country might respond to U.S. sanctions by ceasing support for the International Space Station, causing the football field-sized structure to gradually deorbit and re-enter Earth's atmosphere. On account of the ongoing dilemma, not only the space station, but many other space missions are in jeopardy. Let's discuss how this international conflict will affect the future of space exploration and what SpaceX can do in this situation. The orbiting laboratory, International Space Station, has frequently remained above the fray of geopolitics. Built and operated by the United States, Russia, Europe, Japan, and Canada, the International Space Station has demonstrated how countries can work together on large-scale space projects. The station has been continuously occupied for over 23 years, and it has hosted over 250 people from 19 different countries. While the Multilateral Coordination Board runs the overall operations of the station, things are more complicated when it comes to the modules themselves. The International Space Station comprises 16 different segments built by various countries. Each country retains control over its modules under the ISS agreements. This includes the Russian Zarya, which provides the station with electricity and propulsion, and Zvezda, which provides all of the station's life support systems, like oxygen production and water recycling. While the cooperation between NASA and Roscosmos remains strong despite severe political differences between Russia and the United States, the invasion of Ukraine and the subsequent sanctions are now threatening the existence of the space station. After U.S. President Joe Biden announced new sanctions against Russia that would, among other effects, degrade their aerospace industry, including their space program, Roscosmos Director General Dmitry Rogozin mocked the sanctions as foolhardy, adding that if the U.S. blocks cooperation with Russia, who will save the ISS from an uncontrolled descent out of orbit and a fall on the United States or Europe. Despite its threatening implications, Rogozin's statement is reflective of the fact that Russia's progress resupply spacecraft are currently responsible for periodically boosting the space station's altitude, which decreases over time because of atmospheric drag. Moreover, these spacecraft are supposed to help decommission the ISS, when that time comes, by pushing it into a careful plunge through Earth's atmosphere that ends over the ocean. Replying to Rogozin's tweet, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has hinted that his company might help rescue the International Space Station if Russia tries to sabotage it. He was referring to SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft that could be docked to the ISS to provide reboost capability and attitude control if Russia refuses to save the station from an uncontrolled descent out of orbit. Moreover, for nine years, the U.S. relied solely on Russia to transport astronauts to the ISS after the retirement of the space shuttle. But that dependence dramatically changed in 2020, when SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft delivered a pair of NASA astronauts under the agency's commercial crew program, beginning the company's current regular flights to the ISS. In short, SpaceX has the potential to save the International Space Station from an uncontrolled deorbit and can also provide crew transport to the station if a conflict arises between NASA and Roscosmos. However, there is a real threat to the station that even SpaceX can't handle. In December 2021, the U.S. announced its intention to extend the operation of the space station from its planned end date of 2024 to 2030. Most ISS partners supported the plan, but Russia will also need to agree to keep the station operating beyond 2024. Without Russia's support, the station, and all of its scientific and cooperative achievements, may face an early end. In a recent statement to Euronews, NASA said that the space agency continues working with all of its international partners, including the state space corporation Roscosmos, for the ongoing safe operations of the International Space Station. After NASA announced its intention to continue business as usual with Russia in orbit, Rogozin backed off his belligerent tone, tweeting, as diplomats say, our concerns have been heard. In the meantime, we continue to analyze the new U.S. sanctions to detail our response. Apart from announcing plans to save the International Space Station, CEO Musk assured Ukraine that SpaceX would provide its Starlink satellite broadband service in the face of a Russian invasion. Musk's move came in response to a plea by Ukraine's first vice prime minister and minister of digital transformation, Mikhailo Fedorov. Less than 48 hours after Musk's announcement, a shipment of SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet dishes arrived in Ukraine. 
Internet monitor NetBlock said Ukraine had seen a series of significant disruptions to internet service since Russia launched military operations in the country. Since SpaceX's Starlink service does not require a ground station to transmit data with its users, it is at an advantage in the current scenario to operate at locations that are seeing heavy fighting. Musk has previously stressed Starlink's flexibility in providing internet service. In September, Musk talked about how the company would use links between the satellites to create a network that could provide service even in countries that prohibit SpaceX from installing ground infrastructure for distribution. On 26 February, Roscosmos announced that it is halting cooperation with Europe on Soyuz launches from French Guiana and withdrawing its personnel from the launch site in response to European sanctions for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The Soyuz launch base in French Guiana entered service in 2011 under a cooperative agreement between Roscosmos and the European Space Agency. Since then, 27 Soyuz rockets have launched from the Guiana Space Center, carrying Galileo navigation satellites, commercial communications and Earth observation payloads, space science missions, and French and Italian military satellites. It took three years and cost European governments $800 million to develop the Soyuz launch capability in French Guiana. The recent announcement will delay a Soyuz launch of two Galileo navigation satellites scheduled for April from French Guiana, with another pair of Galileo satellites scheduled to launch later in the year on another Soyuz. In addition to calling off Soyuz launches from French Guiana, Rogozin also announced Saturday that he no longer felt a joint Russian-US collaboration on Russia's planned Venera D mission to Venus was necessary, given the ongoing sanctions. Russia plans to send the Venera D probe to Venus in November 2029. The mission, which would include an orbiter and a lander, was originally planned as a joint Russian-American venture to conduct radar observations of Venus. The European Space Agency said on February 28 that it is very unlikely that its ExoMars mission will launch this September because of sanctions on Russia. The ExoMars mission, carrying a rover named Rosalind Franklin, was originally set to launch in 2020, but technical challenges and pandemic-related issues pushed it back to 2022. The primary goal of the mission is to determine if there has ever been life on Mars and to better understand the history of water on the planet. Besides the launch itself, Russia is providing the landing platform, called Kazachok, that will deliver the rover to the Martian surface. If ESA elects not to cooperate further with Russia on ExoMars, it's unclear whether or how ESA might replace Kazachok, as well as find an alternative launch. The next launch window will be in late 2024. Not just international space agencies, American spacecraft launch service providers such as the United Launch Alliance and Northrop Grumman are also struggling because of the war. The Atlas V rocket, assembled and launched by ULA, continues to use Russian-made RD-180 rocket engines. The Atlas V rocket will retire later this decade and has about two dozen launches left. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, stated that the company had received all RD-180 engines for those missions and they should be unaffected by Russia's current crisis. The situation is less certain for the Antares rocket, which is assembled and launched by Northrop Grumman. The rocket is powered by RD-181 rocket engines built in Russia and a first-stage body built by Ukraine's Yuznoya and Yuzhmash facilities. There were unconfirmed speculative reports that these facilities had been damaged or even destroyed in the war. Northrop Grumman launched the Cygnus NG-17 mission to deliver supplies to the International Space Station last week. At the time, the company stated that it has all of the Antares components required for the next two Cygnus missions, which are tentatively scheduled for August of this year and April of 2023. However, NASA has indicated that more Cygnus flights are likely in the middle of this decade, and if that is the case, Northrop Grumman may have to find an alternative rocket. Finally, the European Space Agency's Vega and Vega Sea rockets use the RD-843 engines for their upper-stage propulsion. This relatively small liquid-fueled engine is manufactured by Yuzhmash in Ukraine, and it is currently not clear how many RD-843 engines Vega's European manufacturer has on hand. The International Space Station and other joint space ventures have served as a prime example of how nations can cooperate with one another in an endeavor that has been relatively free from politics. Increasing tensions, threats, and more aggressive Russian actions are straining the realities of international cooperation in space in the future. What do you think the future holds for space exploration in the current context? Let us know in the comments below. Also, let's hope that this war will end soon and that peace will be restored.